Recently, in one of the engagements that I was working on, I noticed that one of the solutions the company implemented was to replicate Azure groups and members from AD into their Dataverse environment. It seemed to me this was unnecessary, but sometimes due to rest security restriction, this might be the only way. After doing some investigation and verifying what the need was, um, there was no need to have the AD group stored in their Dataverse environment, but only they needed to query and find if particular users belong to particular teams. I offered an alternative, which was basically providing them an app that would allow them to search for this group. And what I'm going to be presenting today is showing or demonstrating how we can configure an app such as this. So the first thing that we need to do is we need to have an app registration of our existing app. And we do that using Azure uh, API permissions or app registration. So I'll go ahead and go and look at the app that we've created. So I have an app, an Azure Graph API app. And within the app, even though this will not be visible during the demo, I have my app client ID, my directory ID, and I have to specify the API permissions. So for this particular case, I'm going to have the user and group read all permissions, and this has to be uh, granted admin consent so that all users will have access to it. I've also configured a client secret with no expiration date. Again, this can also be modified for this particular app registration. Now, once we've configured the app registration, the next thing we have to do is go ahead and create the app. I have an app that I already created, and I used as a template an app that already exists in our PowerApps environment, and that is the org browser. So in order for me not to have to design everything from scratch, I took the org browser and made some modifications to it. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the app. On the home page of the app, I specified a user search or a group search. And what this allows me is to search by Active Directory by a particular user or group. Let's go ahead and run the app and see what happens. I'll go ahead and click the user search and type in the user that I want to search for. This will actually look for the email address and that will return me one result. I can also go ahead and do a group search which will open up the same screen <clears throat> and I'm searching actually the company name in this particular case. And I'll go ahead, do a search for this and this will return to me the list of users that make up this group. Let's go ahead and stop the app and see what the app does. So in my home screen, I have the two buttons. They both basically send me to the same place, but I set a parameter called action type, and one is set to users, while the other is set to groups. In my search screen, this is where the app or the magic really happens. When I click on the hourglass or the search button here, or icon, it's going to look at the action type. And when I set the action type to user, it's going to put the results in my collection based on a flow or a Power Automate flow that I call. So for the first flow, I call the user search. And in case it's groups, I'm going to call a graph group search. And the action is very similar. Truthfully, I don't need the action type for this particular flows, but I decided to leave it for some other implementations. If we take a look at our flows, my first flow is the user search. So I pass to my flow my search string. We can ignore the variable, the action type, because we don't really, really use it. And then in my query string, I am able to build the query. This was added to a few to the group later on. And I also initiate the variable search results. 
I'll pass my query string to the flow. And then in here, I have my authentication that I set up in my graph API. I set a variable for the search results, which is the results for my graph API, and my response object will basically contain the search results. And we have this in JSON format, which we took later. Now, sometimes it might be a little bit tricky to get the results that I need, or the API <coughs> call that you're looking for. In that case, if I look at my graph API, I can see, sorry, in my Microsoft Graph Explorer, I can see that I have my GET request. I can use the version 1 or the beta version. I have a query to list me all the members of a particular group. And I can specify which fields that I want to return, and some of the fields that normally get returned are not the fields that I'm looking for. If I want to learn about the proper availability of fields that are available for me, I can go in Microsoft Docs to my Graph API resources, and I, under the user, I'll see the Graph API options. And from here, I can scroll down and look at the list of properties so I can I determine which uh, which fields or which attributes I want to return from the graph, a graph API. If I run this particular query, it's going to return to me the results from my graph API. Now, let's go and look at the second flow that I have. And this particular flow is very similar. The only difference is I do not necessarily know the group ID that I'm looking for the graph API. So this would basically be called twice. The first time for me to be able to get the group ID. And for the second time, which will be returned uh, by the value from the first statement. And the second time is the list of all of the groups, which will be returned in the graph user's value. Once I have this, I will respond to the event, and I can do a test here based on a recent trigger. Go ahead, click on test, and you will see that at the end, in my outputs, I have a list of all of the users that make up that list, which is what was presented to me in my graph API, in my Canvas app. I hope uh, this graph, sorry, this little demo was beneficial. I have shared the source code of this app on my GitHub channel, and I hope uh, you come back and visit. Thank you.